Today on the Frugal Sportsman, I'm going to show you two methods that I use to fillet my panfish. So stay tuned. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I clean panfish. I've got right here um, nice bluegill my grandson caught. And uh, you notice they've been scaled already. And that was in a review I did on the Magic Fish Scaler. So if that's something you might be interested in, check the video link out below. Um, but right now I'm just going to show you how quickly and easily you can uh, fillet fish. So let's start off here um, by doing this bluegill. Now what I use is just a standard fillet knife. Um, this happens to be a common one you see all the time. One of the things I've done is I've taken a knife sharpener like this. I've added two snap swivels. I've attached it to the, the sheath and I put a, a dual snap link between the two swivels. That way this is always with me and I can just give it a few quick passes with the sharpener to keep it sharp. Put it on the side here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to make a cut all along the dorsal fin right down through the tail. So let me show you how I do that. I just very gently start the knife point in and I just go right down like this. Down to there. And then what I'm going to do, the easiest way to do this so that you get all the ribs out, um, let me show you two ways you can do it. You can take it like this and you can angle the fish up a little bit like that. That will allow your knife to come right along the backbone. And so when you angle like this, you just move down through. Now right about here is where the ribs end. So what I'm doing is I'm riding on the rib right here. And so as I angle down, I can feel right here this drop off. So I want to turn the knife blade. Oh, I feel, see that just drop down right here? And as soon as that drops down, I know I'm right on top of the spine that runs along here, the backbone. And so I just continue that out. Now, the one thing I do is I do not go all the way to the tail. I'll show you why. What I want to do is I want to push this up and want to flip it. And what that does, it allows me to just set the knife on top here and just slowly start and leaves the skin here. It gives me a little handle so that I can just push this along and I'm just pushing you can grab that handle and just push the knife away from me flat on that fillet. And there you go. That's one way to do a fillet. Okay? You can check for bones, but um, there's one right there. I'll just trim that off a little bit. And there you go. There's a, there's a nice handy fillet for you. That's one way of doing it. The nice thing about that is when you do it that way, um, all the guts are inside and everything's intact in the fish and you just get the two fillets when you do the other side. So let me show you how you can do it another way where you can, it's a little quicker, you just take it right behind, right behind the gill, right behind this fin here, go down through, same thing, you tilt the fish up a little bit, but now you're going to cut through all the ribs. And again, right to the tail. See how quick that was? Flip it over, okay? And now I'm going to go right along here and I'm gonna push this right out. Now this part is done. Now all I have to do is I take, see the ribs are very prominent. You can see them, here's the guts. I can take the knife right here, slide it under the ribs, just like this, okay? And that's it, and there's your fillet. That's a much quicker way, but it gives you a little bit more mess. But there you go. Let me show you how to do the perch. I'll, I'll do the, the original cut like I showed you, okay? I start up here, right about where that line would come with the, the gill. And I just give it a quick push, very careful that you're not, because you, you are cutting towards you, but you're just, you're just going in with a knife very slightly. I'm only in about a half inch and I'm bringing it down through just like that. 
Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to get that started at the same angle. All right, I want to just go down till I'm hitting that rib. I can feel it. I'm on top of the rib, top of the rib. Right about here is where it's going to drop off again. Okay. There it goes, down through. Now I can turn the knife down a little bit and now write it flat across. I take the knife and just start. I've got this all as a handle and I can just pull it across. I can turn the fish around so you can get a better angle. And I just push flat, I'm pushing down flat like this underneath that skin and just working very slightly to take it right off that skin and there you go you have a nice fillet now this one does have a couple of couple of ribs right here and I will just take them out I'm gonna start back here where I can see them there we go that's a nice meaty fillet right there okay now I'll do the other side and I will do it the quicker way and we're gonna go right through the ribs and then cut the ribs out later. So again, we're gonna start right here, um, behind the gill, behind the fin, right down through. And I'm just going to go down till I, f I feel go into the chest cavity. Then I'm gonna turn the knife and I'm just cutting right straight across that backbone. Okay. That one went a little too far, not a big deal. Now I've got this, I'm going to take under the ribs, just like this. Okay. You can see that. It's hard to separate because the skin is still on. So now what I do is I turn the fillet around and this is where the tail would be. I would just start there. And again, keep the knife flat and work up. And there you go. Nice fillet, no bones. Okay, I hope that helps you guys um, when it comes to cleaning panfish. Um, and uh, if you like their content, I encourage you to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. If you've got a faster, better way of filleting, please leave it below in the comment. I'd really love to learn from you as, as uh, everybody can learn from each other. All right. Uh, guys, thank you so much, and don't forget to stick around for today's Thought for the Week. Thanks again for watching. God bless you all. Till next time. When we clean fish, our purpose is to take out the edible parts and to leave the waste, to leave the bad behind and take the good. And, you know, sometimes in life situations, um, we tend to just focus on the bad. We don't tend to focus on all the good that's come out of situations in our life. And sometimes we even wind up blaming God and being angry at Him and yelling at Him and, and because we feel if He's in control, then He's allowed this to happen to us. But we don't see the big picture often. And, you know, what we really need to look at is the fact of how much God loves us and how much He that you and I can depend on him. Back in 2010, I contracted esophageal cancer. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, um, I didn't have acid reflux, so the doctors really don't know how I got it. But I was only given a 16% chance to survive. In fact, my first oncologist only gave me 36 months to live. It was something that totally devastated my life, not just in the fact of having to fight it, but the fact of what it did to my body. Uh, it actually took me from a man that was 293 pounds to one that was 143 pounds. It left me pretty much bedridden for a year and a half. Uh, I lived on death's door every day, not, showing it, not knowing if I was going to uh, live or die that day. I had 12 surgeries in two years and 14 months of chemo, and then I had another tumor. and It was just one thing after the other, but I'll tell you what I learned from all that. When I didn't have anything to offer God, He still loved me for who I was. And that is a message I want to share with you. And that is, you know what? God's not about how well you perform. 
God loves you for who you are. You are his creation. You are his glory. You are, you are his, his masterpiece. And you know what? God wants the very best for you. And he sometimes takes us through things because it's only through those things that he can reveal how much he loves us. You want to know what I learned from my cancer and from that difficult time that lasted about five years? And that was this. It wasn't how to suffer. It wasn't how to, how to be patient. It wasn't any of that. It was that God did not need me, but he wanted me. Guys, today, if I can give you one message, it's that God wants you. I would encourage you to want him back. I've written a book that's down below in the links, and I really encourage you to check it out. It's called Growing Deep. It's free. I don't want to capture your email or anything. I want to give it to you because I want you to discover how much God loves you and what your life can really be like with him in it. So I'd encourage you to check out the link below. Download it, read it. It's not a long read, but it'll take you step by step through my journey in first, the first time I came to know him, and it'll show you how that you can grow in him each day. So guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all you do in helping to promote this channel, sharing it with your friends, or whatever, but more than anything, I wanna leave you with this, and that is that God loves you more than you could ever know.